I mean, they're these incredibly powerful creatures. They want to have an engaging relationship with you if you can make that connection. Some of them follow you around like dogs and are sort of like pets and things like that, but others really want to work. They really want to have a job. A lot of them are, are funny that way, that they really, they need to have a job or they get bored and they start breaking stuff. <laughs> breaking fences or injuring themselves or just generally causing trouble. It can take years, but you know, I take a horse that was, the minute you'd walk into the paddock, they turn around and just try to kick you. And now that horse comes running to me when I come in the paddock. And you learn from every horse because every horse is so different. The process is different. We have five and we're about to have another one. <laughs> so we're gonna have six by the end of next week person had been keeping her two horses at um, a woman's house and slowly the care decreased over time to where then she wasn't showing up anymore and so the property owner took a look at the horses and um, they were still wearing winter blankets in May and when she took the blankets off they were basically starved. Animal Control reached out to me last week and asked if we could take the older horse. So he's um, 22 years old, he's blind in one eye, he has an injury. He's basically an old guy with, you know, decent manners. And this is far improved from where an animal control was contacted. So at least he's been getting fed for like six or seven weeks. When I was like 22, I had, a, I had an early 20s crisis, and this is so stupid. So I read a book, okay? I read the Horse Whisperer book. I knew nothing about horses, zero, zip. So <clears throat> when I read this book, I was like, oh my God, there's like this whole thing with like horses and people and I had no idea, like not a clue. So I called a couple of local barns and the first one that called me back, I went and took a lesson. And I, the stars in my eyes, like, I was like, oh my God, I need to do this every single day of my life. I do feel like Amy has found her calling. She, she clearly has a way of communicating with horses and she's very fully present with the horses. I sort of accidentally got into rescuing horses. <laughs> it wasn't like my lifelong dream or goal or something like that, you know. Um, I got my first rescue, which a friend talked me into getting. She was like, you need to get this baby and save him. So I was like, oh, sure, <laughs> why not? <laughs> so I rescued this draft horse and uh, I started taking on some of my own personal rescues here at my training barn. So I was getting sort of sucked further and further into the rescue. <laughs> so then I decided it was time to just start my own nonprofit because it just seemed like this is the way I was going. This is the direction I was heading. And if I was going to do it, I was going to do it 100%. So, um, so I started Sumner Brook Farm a couple of years ago. Um, you know, there's not a lot of profit involved here. So this is a total labor of love that I'm, you know, if you want to be corny about it. It's not about blaming people who can't take care of their horses um, or making them feel guilty or bad-mouthing the situation. It's just a very positive energy about it and it's about making it possible for people who have fallen on hard times or whose circumstances have changed for whatever reason to have a safe place for their horses to go. Some of the rescues come off the trailer and they don't even lead. You can't even, you don't even have control over them just to walk them. So sometimes I'm literally starting at the beginning with these horses that they have to learn how to walk with a person. Come on, you can do it. Other horses might have physical issues that are causing pain. So you have to go through the process of figuring out what's physically maybe causing the behavior. Libby, don't do that. 
No tantrums. To eliminate the negative behaviors, you have to replace it with positive behavior. And you have to do that over and over and over again until this is what the horse learns. They have to learn that the other behavior is not an option. Caleb was part of a larger neglect case in Lyme, Connecticut, where there were 19 horses and various other farm animals that were severely neglected. And um, a veterinarian who happened to be our veterinarian uh, was called in to evaluate and then possibly euthanize this group of horses because the state did not have the resources at that time. She posted all of the horses on Facebook and asked for the local community to help. And within 48 hours, all of the horses had been placed. I texted her and I said, who's left? And she said, this old ancient horse and nobody wants him. It's like, okay, I'll come get him. <laughs> so, so I went to go pick him up and I took off his blanket and yeah, I just felt sick and just about cried. He just put his head in my hands and I was like, oh my God, this is just awful. Um, so it was, a, it was a rough first few weeks and eventually after about a month he got strong enough um, to start to be turned out outside. He can't chew hay. He just he has like no molars left. He's down to the gums. Uh, so he eats a diet of soaked everything. He loves it. He thinks it's great. Um, he gained back all of his weight and probably then some. So yeah, he's still, it's, you know, almost four years later and he's still still hanging in there. So go Caleb. <laughs> so Sadie came to us just about a year ago, actually. Um, she was an owner surrender. The owner had purchased her. Um, she had been a lesson horse at a barn where she was riding. She's got some physical challenges. So rehoming her wasn't really happening for the owner. The owner was diagnosed with a benign brain tumor that was impairing her ability to work full time and still be able to afford the horse. Just the way she's built, she's got that sort of typical sway back appearance, which actually can improve if she's working, you know, and she also can't chew hay <laughs> because her teeth are just not, not great. She and Caleb are neighbors and they're basically like an old married couple. They are hilarious together. They do everything together. They stand around and gum loose hay together and spit out the disgusting leftovers. They, uh, fret when the other one gets taken out. Sort of like, I can't live without you kind of thing. In the spring, when Caleb's flirting with all the ladies, Sadie definitely gets jealous. But they really, they're such a cute little couple. You have to give the horse everything to get what you want from them. You have to be, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally willing to give whatever it takes to get them to come out of whatever they're stuck in. You know, I just, I do it because it needs to be done. You know, there's a need, I'm good at it, why not? Thank you.